नमस्कार टुडे वी विल बी डीलिंग विथ ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट दैट इज सिग्नलिंग इन आरई एरिया एंड द फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग द सिग्नलिंग इन ए सी इलेक्ट्रीफाइड एरियाज दिस इज अगेन डिवाइड टू थ्री पार्ट टूडे लेट अस स्टार्ट विथ पार्ट वन दिस इज द बेसिक इंट्रोडक्शन फॉर सिग्नलिंग इन आरई एरिया this is the insulators contact wires and the ohe equipment that is available while this is the filter unit that is used in our signaling system block instruments so before starting let us see what are the ohe parts important ohe parts what are they this is the contact wire and the catenary wire this is the insulator this is the dropper then we have bracket tube and uh, this is the portal drop arm while this is the stay tube what are the extracts as per signal engineering manual the latest edition of 2021 uh, the main objectives are to ensure that the signaling equipment continues to function normally in the presence of traction current so jab traction current rehti hai tab ऑल द सिग्नलिंग इक्विपमेंट जितने भी हमारे पास है वो सही तरह से काम करना चाहिए इट शुड नॉट एग्जिबिट फॉल्स इंडिकेशन और कॉज अनसेफ ऑपरेशन ऑफ ट्रेन इन सिग्नलिंग सिस्टम ड्यूटी आर ई नॉर्मल आर ई सप्लाई अवेलेबिलिटी है तो उसमें किसी तरह की कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं आना चाहिए इन द सिग्नलिंग सिस्टम एंड this objective should be achieved even if the traction or signaling system is uh, in a faulty or anomalous condition means signaling system mein ya oh system mein dono mein koi bhi problem aaya then we should not have any problem with respect to signaling it should not have any untoward incident in signaling system and number 3 to safeguard the equipment and staff from electrical traction currents what are the factors affecting the signaling in ac electrified areas they are generally classified into four what are they they are visibility of signals due to ohe structure because of ohe structure visibility of signals will come down electrical clearance of signals due to live ohe close by ohe supply is available 25 kv because of that our signals uh, should have some clearance safety margin then traction return current this is one factor again affecting uh, our signaling system in uh, re area we use single rail track circuit for signaling and the, the second rail is used by the traction for return current because of this return current many of our equipments have to be re reorganized for suiting re area and the fourth one is electrostatic induction and electromagnetic induction these are the effects mostly on cables first thing is visibility of signals here the nearest part of the signal post from central line of track is 8.44 meters in re area so the minimum distance from central line of track to signal is 8.44 meters while here ohe mast is uh, around 2.5 meters from central line of track because of that here you can see the figure the distance from central line of track to signal is 8.44 meters while ohe it is 2.5 meters if the distance is less than that what should be done the signal should be painted in red and white stripes and the distance from the signal to the central line of track has to be written in red on a white background coming to ohe masts which are placed near the signal the distance from the signal to the ohe mast ahead shall not be less than 30 meters while a ohe mast in rear of the signal behind the signal shall not be less than 10 meters if it is anchored and not less than 3 meters if there is no anchor coming to electrical working clearance from the working platform of a signaling uh, of a signal it should be 2 meters so the distance between the signal 
platform on which we work or generally we can say for safety reason from the nearest part of the signal to the live OHE shall be 2 meters. Here in this you can see this is the uh, zone, this is our uh, um, contact wire and the distance from signal shall be shall not be less than 200, uh, 2000 mm that is 2 meters while at any cost no signaling or equipment shall be in this B area which is 700 mm at any cost you should not have anything below 7 nearer to 700 mm so working platform to live OHE the working platform to live OHE shall be 3 meter 2 meters minimum when signal is located within 2 meters, let us say in this case the distance between this OHE wire and the signal rate is less than 2 meters, then an iron screening mesh has to be provided and it has to be earthed and the resistance of the earth shall be less than 10 ohms. Now, for any reason we are not able to provide this mesh and the distance is less than 2 meters, then we have to provide a caution board to caution the signal staff that it is uh, uh, that the caution board should be provided at 3 meters height to alert the signal staff. Third one is the induction effect. This induction effect is basically because of electrostatic induction and electromagnetic induction. These two types of inductions are available on the signaling cables. We have two types as told. First one is the electrostatic induction. This is generally like a condenser effect between OHE wire and overhead, overhead lines. These are our overhead lines which were used previously. Now we are not using. So this is completely eliminated by removing the overhead lines and transferring this uh, and using underground cables. This can be totally eliminated. Further overhead lines are not at all permitted in RE areas. Now let us discuss about electromagnetic induction. This electromagnetic induction is based on a transformer effect. This is between our OHE wire and the underground cable conductors which are signal ca current carrying conductors. This induction effect cannot be eliminated. Previously electrostatic induction can be eliminated completely by transferring the overhead lines to cables but this cannot be eliminated at any cost but in the, its effect can be reduced by suitable methods. So what are the suitable methods we will see at the later stage. Cable armors on both sides should be earthed and circuits to be modified accordingly. So here we need to use isolation transformers going uh, taking the cables in underground this is your OHE and these are the electromagnetic induction effects. Now the catenary current, normal catenary current on a double line is taken as a 1000 amps while uh, for single line it is 800 amps. While if there is any short circuit then the maximum current is considered as 800 amps on a double line section while it is uh, up to 6000 amps on single line section. If these uh, parameters are considered based on the above discussion this uh, above parameters discussed in the previous slide the induced voltage on our signaling conductors is 95 volts per kilometer on double line sections and 116 volts per kilometer on single line sections this is the current that is induced when the cable is running parallel to the track and uh, the current carrying capacity this voltage may be increasing or decreasing based on various parameters but the maximum is 95 volts per kilometer this data this parameter is considered for all our signaling circuits in the next part we will discuss other aspects of signaling in re area till then if any questions do comment thank you